We like to go on rum tours. Particularly if you've uh, seen some of our videos, we've been on multiple rum tours. But one of the most interesting we've been on was a tasting at Ron de Barolito out of uh, San Juan. And uh, on this tour, we got to sample their whole product line from their two-star rum to their five-star rum. And uh, it was just uh, it was just super fascinating. You know, the, the tour guide was extremely knowledgeable and uh, we, we learned a tremendous amount about rum and Ron de Barolito. So, this video, well, it's a little longer than our normal ones, about 30 minutes. You know, it has a lot of inf interesting information and a lot of, uh, you know, great, uh, great facts about rum itself in, in Ron de Barolito. So, we hope you stay to the end and enjoy the video. And uh, here's Lisa. She's just three stars, not five, just three. I'm a four star one. Four star, $300 a bottle star instead of the $750 a bottle star. This year, just a $39 a bottle start. <laughs> just make sure that wherever you decide to sit, you have rum in those glasses. Because if you go all the way to the end, that's the diet rum area. <laughs> What's the very first thing that you notice? The color? The color. It's like dark. It changes, it grows darker as you move to the right. That is a natural part of the aging process. Spirits, this is not a quality that you need to rum. Spirits, in general, as they age, they will grow darker. That's the natural progression. That being said, it's not as easy as going to the local liquor store, grabbing the darkest bottle of rum that you find, and say, Edgar at Rum de Barilito said this should be the oldest. You might be disappointed if you do that. <laughs> For this, to hold true, conditions have to be similar or at least very close. Once you start changing aspects in the manufacturing, then that may no longer necessarily be the case. For example, what happens if you age in barrels made out of different kinds of wood? Then the color can no longer be compared because different woods will result in different colors. When they build the barrels, they tend to char they burn the inside of the barrel, and this can be done to different degrees and temperatures. And that will thus produce different results in flavor and color. Some companies like their barrels heavily charred. Others only want a very mild toast. No end of the spectrum is better than another. It simply produces different results of flavor and appearance. So those are just a couple of examples to keep in mind. What happens after you get it out of the barrel? What processes happen? Is there filtration? What type of filtration? So some filters can have an impact on color. I'm gonna give you a very good example. I already told you how in Puerto Rico all rum must be aged. That includes white rum. That is if you want to have that label that says Puerto Rican rum, which is a matter of prestige. You don't have to do it, and you could choose not to do so and make rum fresh out of a still, then you have to call it a generic rum. It's just rum, but you do not have that Puerto Rican rum in your life. That includes white rum, and thus, when ripe rum comes out of a barrel after one year, it does have a little bit of color. It's a very pale, yellow-like color. White rums will filter that color out using charcoal filtration. Because white rum, it's a much more direct competitor to vodka most of the time than rums that are aged further. That's a different niche of the market, right? Even though there's rum, I have to remember what I said earlier. Not all rum is the same just for being called rum. There's different rums that are meant for different purposes. So that's just a few examples of how color can change. If we continue talking about all of those little things that can change color, we'll be here for a while. <laughs> but just to give you that point that don't go to the liquor store and that this is not just rum. The darkest whiskey, the darkest cognac, the darkest brandy that you find is not necessarily the oldest. Now, what's a more reliable way of knowing if the rum is aged longer? Our sense of smell. It's a very good one. So let's go ahead. I invite you to go one by one and smell those rums from left to right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
todavía, todavía. If you're wondering about your rums in your map right in front of you, you can see the stars so you know which rum is which. Get stronger and stronger. This one takes most like a madeira, almost like a port. It has a sweetness, right? Yeah, it's called on a madeira. And remember, in a way, it will make sense because it comes from those sherry barrels, which have that, they're fortified wine as well. Oh, it smells good. Can you smell it? Yeah, I probably can't. Poor Bob. Jerez is a, we would call it kind of like a cousin of a madeira or a port. Now, as you went through the rums, you may have seen that each one of those rums has its own unique quality. The first one tends to smell a little bit more stringent, more ethanol there. But as you move to the right, it begins to grow sweeter, more fragrant. There's more in that aroma. It becomes more complex. Aging. As the rum spends time in the barrel, it will begin to develop those flavors and aromas which serve as a cover for that alcohol filling. All of these rums that we're going to be tasting today, they're all equally strong. This, this, and all of them are 43% alcohol per volume. But as we go, you will notice that they do not feel the same. With that being said, let's do what we came here to do. Let's drink some rum. <laughs> Our first rum today will be Ronde Bajelita, two stars, the one to the left side. Feel free to take your time with your rum, right? There's no rush. Have a little conversation with your rum as you experiment with it. I'm going to get a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's okay to talk to your rum. Just worry if he comes back to you. <laughs> so so you've had too much rum. <laughs> how long has this been in the barrel? The two star? This. It's a rum that has been aged between three to five years. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But the aging process for this one, three Perfect. to five years. Perfect. So, Ron del Barrilito, dos estrellas, two stars, is the second rum that was made by Ron del Barrilito. Makes sense at first glance, two stars, the second one. You will quickly notice that it doesn't really go like that. Two Stars is the first rum that was made here after the years of the Prohibition. The original rum de Barrelito is in fact three stars. That's why when you look at our logo, you will always see that we have three stars in the logo. It's not five stars, it's not four stars, it's three. But three stars is a rum that's aged up to ten years. You need to start making rum again, it's very tough to wait for 10 years before you can get started again. Also, coming out of the prohibition, people had turned into drinking more cocktails rather than drinking meat. The prohibition, a lot of people don't know this, but ironically, it's also known as the golden age of cocktails. <laughs> Why? Because- They were disguising them. You had to disguise it, that's one. But more than that- Oh, the, the booze was so bad. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. If you wanted to drink that, you had to- this guy's that flavor, you had to mix it. <laughs> Coming out of the prohibition, a lot of these recipes that have been invented didn't just vanish. People liked them. And they were here to stay. So this was a great rum to be used for many of those cocktails. This is why this rum is usually preferred by many for a wide variety of cocktails. In fact, when you go to the bar, you're gonna see that most of the cocktails that we make here are made with two stars. Because it has the right attributes for it. The rum, as it touches your lips, you may have noticed, it's a little sweet. A hint of vanilla, or maybe a hint of fruit, but it's just a hint. And it fades away rather quickly. Then, when you drink it, it's a bit more familiar then. It tastes a little bit more like Friday night. You get it? <laughs> but it's not very long lasting either. It fades away quickly. It's not overly harsh, despite being relatively young. I'm not saying, it could not exist, but at least one of the perks of the job, I had the opportunity to try many, many different rums. I haven't found another rum of the same age that tastes any smoother than this one. 
Sure, I'm sure there's rumps like this. All of these guys do tend to be smoother, but these are rumps of a higher age, of the same age. I've never found that rump yet. And given the fact that the flavor is short, it means that once you use it in a cocktail, it's not going to dominate your mixers. It's going to blend in with them. So it's a fantastic rum for drinks like mojitos, daiquiris, piña coladas, and many, many other cocktails as well. So it's a very versatile rum, convenient to have. So when you want to have those cocktails that you like to drink at the beach. Mm -hmm. Rum, I tell people. People ask me all the time. So Edgar, what's the best rum here? They say, well, Depending. depends on what you want it for. <laughs> Do you want it for a special moment? Do you want it for your weekends? Do you plan to head to the beach? If you're going to go to the beach, I tell you to take this with you, you'll be fine mummified the next day, still holding a drink under the Caribbean sun. <laughs> <laughs> and want something refreshing in that moment. So you take a rum that you can make refreshing drinks with. Now, if you want more of a rum that you can enjoy of a very good quality, it's affordable, and that you can have often, look no further than three stars. It is excellent. Now you want rum for those special moments, those moments that only come a few times in your life. Maybe sometimes even once. Oh, that's when you break out the big guns. But we'll get there in a moment. <laughs> for now, let's see the difference now between two stars and three stars and talk a little bit more about that, those age statements. I invite you to have a look at three stars and see what it's like. Three stars is around age between six to ten years. As I keep going, you're gonna continue to hear that I said this rum is between this age and this age. Not a specific year. What? It's not that the rum is random and if you're unlucky you get the six-year-old bottle and if you are lucky you get the ten-year-old bottle. No, it doesn't work like that. Barrels are always different one from the other. Even if those barrels came from the exact same place at the exact same time, the wood that was used to make them did not necessarily come from the same area or the same region, the same tree. Those and hundreds of other factors will add up into developing a very unique barrel. And just like I mentioned earlier, barrels may be like twins. Some of them may be very similar, but not two barrels are ever exactly the same. This is one of the things that our master blender needs to take into account. One of the luxuries of working in a smaller scale is that when he selects a group of barrels for a production run, be it 10, 15, 20, 25 barrels, whatever he needs, he's working with a relatively small sample. So he can go through those barrels to see how they have developed. If a barrel tastes too sweet or not sweet enough, he knows those elements and he will begin to blend barrels together in order to have consistency so that your bottle of three stars or two stars or four stars tastes the same, doesn't matter when and where you get it. Barrels of the same age don't all taste the same. If I go, I have a group of you guys and another group of 10 more people, and I say, good news everybody. The master blender said that today each one of you can pick a barrel, whatever barrel you want, from five years to 10 years. The, that other group will quickly say, well, that's a no-brainer. We want 10-year-old barrels, all of us. But not you guys, because you're going to be the smarter ones. You're going to look at him and say, before I pick up my barrel, can I taste it? Because you quickly realize that sometimes an eight-year-old barrel can taste better than a 10-year-old barrel. Or a seven-year-old barrel can taste better. Or sometimes it's exactly as you expect, and it's the 10-year-old barrel that's the best. But that's something that you can only know by trying. So when the master blender chooses the barrels, he will begin to blend all of that together until it gets to that point that he needs it, that he expects the rum to be. By sampling against a random sample of a random bottle has to match, and a sample of the last batch. All of them have to match. So it's not done by memory alone. Memory can be treacherous. And all of the members in the team, they also get to voice their opinion of whether they agree that the batch is consistent with their profile that they know, or if there's something that may be off about it and they need to look into. So that's how they work with the age of the run. 
all of our bottles make the age statement on the back label. So if you forget about, you can look it up there. In Puerto Rico, when you make an age statement like this, if I say you have a minimum there of six years, legally you cannot have anything younger than those six years. In three stars, you have likely noticed that this is a rum that's very rich in flavor. Notes of caramel, molasses, honey, spices such as cinnamon or cloves. It's smoother, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not a lot lighter, and the finish is longer. You feel that aftertaste for a little longer. Mm -hmm. This is the original rum del barrilito that Pedro created and carried it about in his little barrel of rum, and that people grew to know and love. Mm -hmm. The rum that we have been making here for 141 years. That's why when you go to most bars, and you ask for a Ron del Barrilito, 9 out of 10 bars, this is what you're going to be offered and served. And it has reached an iconic status here in Puerto Rico. I don't need to try a challenge. Go to almost any bar in Puerto Rico, ask for a rum old fashioned. See what rum the bartender will use. In almost every single one of those bars, will grab for this bottle. Remember that earlier I mentioned that Ron del Barrilito does have some qualities that can make it somewhat similar to a bourbon. Why? Because even though these barrels that we use are not ex-bourbon barrels, they're still made out of American oak. So it will have certain similarities to a bourbon. That's why this rum can work fantastically for something like a rum old fashioned or a rum Manhattan. While at the same time bringing flavors that are unique to rum, and this rum in particular as well, to make a familiar experience something new and exciting. So it is a rum that's very versatile. As I said earlier, most people would like to have this rum neat. Some people, especially those of you who maybe enjoy drinking scotch, you may have seen that in scotch, people like to add a little bit of water sometimes. Something that's perfectly fine to do with the rum as well. It will open up some flavors rather nicely. But also, it's a rum that you can use for certain types of cocktails, mostly cocktails that are spirit forward and you want the rum to be the main flavor there. Also works very well for tiki cocktails. If you want something a bit more tropical, you're in the Caribbean, right? So if you want something a bit more tropical, tiki cocktails like Mai Tais, Painkillers, Planters Pies, those would all be fantastic with this rum. As those cocktails typically have stronger, bolder flavors of spices that may overshadow a softer, younger rum. But what happens if we move on past 10 years and onwards all the way to 20 years, 10 to 20 years? Let's give Ron de Barrelli the four stars. Try. Four stars. If you look at the bottle, you'll see that in the label, it says Edición de la Hacienda, the estate edition. This is our most recent rum to reach the market. So if you've been paying attention, you probably noticed I said three stars is the original, then two stars. And this is the newest, so this means this one came before. I like to say this is like the Star Wars movies of Rome. <laughs> but, remember that what the stars tell us is which rum is aged longer, not necessarily which one came first. And the stars is yet another one of the legacies that Pedro adopted from the cognac community. It's not commonly used nowadays, most cognacs lean more towards the XO, BSOP, Napoleon system. Mm -hmm. But in his day, a lot of cognacs will tell you about their age based on how many stars they have. And there are some that still do that. But depending on how many stars, that was the designation of that cognac. So when he made his rum, it was the equivalent of a three-star cognac, thus he called it a three-star rum. If you look for older bottles of cognac, and you go to Google and you look for images of it, you see that a lot of them had a very similar design to what the bottle of Ronde Barrelito looks like. Now, this one, we started selling this rum just as we opened this visitor center. This visitor center opened in February of 2019, so we're close to three years now. Since they all did both things together, opening this and selling the bottle, they said, let's get them together. So for the first two years, you could only get this bottle from our gift shop. We still have a barrel there that's full with this rum. Part of the experience is that if you like this rum, you can go to that barrel and feel your own bottle yourself straight from the barrel. Mm. So 
So you can be a master blender for a day. You start with an empty bottle, go there, fill it up, cork it, dip it in wax to seal it, brand it with the initials of your founder, write your serial number, which nobody else is going to have, and you're going to record it in the logbook so that we know that bottle is unique to you. And that's something that you can do if you like. As for the flavor, I think it goes beyond saying that this is a really smooth rum, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. It's silky, velvety as it goes down. Very light and pleasant. Remember, this rum is not any weaker than its predecessors. It's just that it's aged longer, and thus the flavors play a bigger part of what you feel and experience. You will find some flavors that you will taste in the previous rums, letting you know it does come from the same background. Those of vanilla. Vanilla is very typical to American oak. So that's usually a tell that that type of barrel is used. Uh. So if you're a blind tasting one day and you don't know what you're tasting, and you taste vanilla, you can say, hmm, American white oak was used in this. <laughs> you'll probably be right. <laughs> Most likely. But you can also see that those flavors of caramel, molasses, some unique flavors to it. Drier fruits like plums, figs, raisins. Mm -hmm. has a very long, pleasant finish of honey and maple right there. Maple, yeah. I definitely mm -hmm. tested the maple. I smell maple syrup. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Those of you who have experienced spirits that receive a considerable aging cherry, that's a flavor that tends to develop in them after enough time. And you can witness that. Again, that's one of the elements that also makes Ron del Barrilito unique among rums in Puerto Rico. No other Puerto Rican rum ages exclusively in sherry like we do. While some may opt to use it as a finish or later in the process, we're the only one that for all of our rums, from day one until the day it gets out of the barrel, uses sherry. Now, when we get to this type of rum, this is a rum that will be highly recommended as a sipping rum. I'm sure somewhere in the world, as I speak, somebody else is making a rum and cook with it. <laughs> That's not really what we will recommend. Ultimately, the way for you to drink your rum is an entirely personal matter. So if, you, if that's the way you enjoy it, don't let anybody stop you. But you will get the most out of your rum if you experience all of those years that went into the manufacturing process. 20 years is a long time, and that's part of what you want to enjoy in this type of rum and see all those flavors that come with it, that smoothness and that richness of flavor profile. Some people, like I said earlier, do like to add a little splash of water or maybe a small ice cube or two. That's perfectly fine. It allows you to get some of the background flavors that you wouldn't be able to taste at a higher proof. Once you get it down a little bit, they start showing. So if you want to have a more complete flavor experience with it, that may be a good option for you. Some people are purists and that's perfectly fine and just want to enjoy it on its own merit, so that's also a good way to have you have a little bit of variety to play there. But the moment I know that a lot of you have been waiting for, <laughs> what does rum age up to 35 years taste like? Well, let's find out. Still has that flavors of ripe fruits. 
ripe banana, mango, pineapple. It's subtle, but it's there, and it's very ripe. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I like about this rum, and it's one of those things that you tend to either like it or hate it, it's a little spicy. It's not that it burns, it's not the alcohol, but a spiciness like ginger or pepper mm -hmm. at the beginning. And that's one of the things I really love about this rum. It has those flavors of nuts, caramelized walnuts, roasted pecans. You can notice that in the rum. And it still has that delicious finish of honey and maple towards the end. And it's very extended. You're going to be tasting it still for a few minutes. <clears throat> Five stars, did count before four stars, as we already said earlier. And because of that, it's more widely available. A lot of people seem confused, understandably, because four stars is a little harder to get your hands on. Mm. Even though we now sell it outside of here, it's only a few selected venues that have it. You're not going to find it in most places. Five stars. It's a little bit more widely distributed. The reason is that, well, when Five Star was made, none of this existed yet, so it was more widely distributed. But it's still the more exclusive out of the two. Why? Because Four Stars, we do continue to make more every couple of months. Even though it's small batches, we can make more. Five Stars was made in a single batch. What's out there, that's all the Five Stars there is for now, until we have enough barrels of the right age to make another run. That's why the bottle, if you look at it, says Primera Edición, the first edition. Wow. When the second one comes in, well, it will be appropriately labeled. But that's the difference between the two. I love that the two rums do not just feel like five stars is a direct upgrade to four stars. They both have something unique to offer. They hit different areas of the palate differently. Four stars I describe as a slower but very steady build until it finally reaches that flavorful climax that it has. While five stars is much more flavor forward. As soon as it touches, it touches your lips, you feel it all at once. It's like that friend of yours that as soon as you see him, hey, how are you doing? I'm going to do the five stars. Nice to meet you, right? <laughs> it's really forward. And I love that about it. That's one of the qualities that really draws me to it. But after having had all of these rums, my friends, it is now my pleasure to officially pronounce all of you as Ronde Barilito Connoisseurs. Mm. And I have your certificates to go on the <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so Let's see who's our first connoisseur. I have Lisa. It's me. Lisa, congratulations. You have a long connoisseur. I think it's why I would like to hear you recently, but I'm going to show you more accurate. But if I'm not mistaken, write your name down here. And the requisite gift shop. I'm sure we can buy some rum here. Oh, definitely. Definitely buy some rum. Cinco estrellas. Seven hundred fifty for cinco estrellas. Three hundred dollars for the cuatro estrellas. Salud. Mm. This is the pina colada made here at the uh, hacienda at the bar, and it's about as good as a pina colada can be. That's not one that I made. Not exactly. It's pretty darn good. Not as good as yours, but it's good. It has it's, a little uh, hint of cinnamon to it. Or something. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think they made it with the uh, the three star, the tres estrella. So we really um, enjoyed tasting all those different star agronis. One star, two star, three star, four star, five star. Well, and it. then we went into the gift shop hoping to buy a bottle of four or five star, maybe to take to our Thanksgiving feast. And we discovered that. There's no way we're buying a bottle of that. The five star is $750. And the four star is $300 for one bottle. And I know it's been aging for many, many years, but that's too rich for my blood. Maybe I'll go back and buy a $30 bottle of the one star and make some pina coladas with it. But in the meantime, we're enjoying this cocktail, complimentary cocktail, and we had the best time at this tour. It cost $80, and it was worth every penny. 
Thank you, Edgardo. I know you already visited our channel, so I know you'll be coming to see this. Thank you, Edgardo, for a perfect tour. A really wonderful experience. If you're in Puerto Rico, go to the Barilita Rum Tour and learn how to taste rum or learn how to make drinks. They have a, um, a mixology class as well, again, for $80. And it's just a really nice way to spend an afternoon. So thanks for joining us at uh, Hacienda Barilito. It's actually Hacienda Santa Ana, where they've been making Barilito rum since before any other rum. 1880. Since 1880, the oldest rum in Puerto Rico. And soon we will introduce you to a different kind of rum at... Bacardi. At Bacardi. But for today, it's Barilito. So until then, May your suitcase always be messy. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified of all our glorious travel videos. Hasta luego and salud. <laughs>